Hi everybody, my name is Max and today I'm making the ultimate desk lamp out of carbon fiber and a lot of aluminium. If you don't have all the tools to machine metal, you could just as well print most of these parts. I'm using a high power 30 watt LED module that needs a lot of cooling, but you could just as well use a normal LED light bulb and one of these standard sockets. I want this to be the ultimate desk lamp though, so I'm going to machine most of the parts. And of course I put a step by step guide and all the CAD files in the description for you guys. I actually got started by breaking off one of the LEDs. Turns out they're very fragile, but luckily they have these solder pads on every LED so you can bypass them with a little wire. This module outputs 1900 lumens, so it's super bright, but it also generates a lot of excess heat. It's got 30 watts after all. Without a heatsink, it would burn up in a minute or so. So this is what I came up with, and I'm going to machine it on my CNC. And remember, if you don't have access to a CNC, you could just use a normal light bulb that doesn't produce that much heat. You might be wondering why I'm even building my own desk lamp. The answer is quite simple and I couldn't find one that I liked. I looked at all the design classics, but I don't find them very interesting. And every doctor has one on his desk, so it's not very original to me. What you're seeing there is my CNC confusing the coordinate system, so it actually tried to cut this part in the wrong orientation. At the beginning I was using these carbide end mills and they are super hard but also very brittle so sometimes they actually break when a chip gets wedged between it and the workpiece. So after breaking three of them I switched over to HSS bits and in theory they don't last as long because they don't stay sharp that long but they are also more flexible so they don't break that often so actually when I'm using them they last me much longer than carbide tips so don't buy carbide cutters. I couldn't actually cut all the way through this piece because my cutters weren't long enough, so I cut the rest out onto the bandsaw. And yes, you can use a wood bandsaw to cut aluminium. I wanted to add some grooves on top of the heat sink to add some more surface area and also to make it look a little bit more interesting. I read a lot about heat sink design for this project, and it's actually most important to increase the airflow, not the surface area. So large channels between the fins are the best. I considered just using a normal heatsink that I can buy off the shelf, but then since I've got a CNC I might as well use it. And by the way, I built a CNC from scratch, so sometimes people say like, oh you've got a CNC, that makes it easy, and actually I had to build it first, and this makes it a little bit more easy, but it's also quite a lot of work to set it up. And you still have to finish stuff by hand, as you see there. I went up to, I think, 2000 grit there, and then I polished it on this polishing wheel, and this is a super cool tool, it works really well and goes into your drill press. Uh, there's a link to it in the Instructable. To attach the heatsink to the housing, I planned on putting screws inside these holes here and they would expand the metal a little bit and wedge it in place. But I ended up with an interference fit, so I didn't use them ultimately. So next up is the aluminium hinge that holds the heatsink to the carbon fiber stem. And of course I machined this on my CNC as well. I added these washers to not mar the surface, but that didn't actually work because the washers turned a little bit. I should use multiple washers and add some oil, but it doesn't matter too much. I can easily send this out. And there you go, one beautiful little metal hinge. And I'm epoxying this to the heatsink. I was considering screws, but they would have to be really small and I couldn't get a drill to drill that deep into the aluminium from the other side. I think this is just going to be fine. And as we all know, a hinge always has two parts, so this is the other side that gets pushed into a carbon fiber rod that I'm just going to buy on eBay. It just cost me like 15 euros I think, so it's not very expensive. And I started by turning down this piece of aluminium to fit exactly into the carbon fiber tube. And once I had the right size, uh, I cut all the way to make a really nice fit here. Beautiful, no glue required. Like most people, I don't actually own a lathe. The one you see me using here belongs to my local makerspace, which is absolutely awesome. Go check out one that's close to you. They have a ton of amazing tools and also great people to share tips and tricks with.
So I cut all three of these similar plugs in one session and then I went home to finish them on my CNC. Of course you could 3D print these parts. I would just beef them up a little bit, uh, double them in size and also uh, use ABS to print them and then you have really strong parts and they should be just as good as these ones here. These just look a little bit more slick I guess at the end. So just add a screw, tighten it up and that makes for a really solid joint. So now that the top hinge is done we can move on to the base and uh, we've got a similar hinge just in here that we have two halves. One goes into the carbon fiber and the other one goes into the table to hold up the lamp. I'm taking off 0.3 millimeters per pass and at the end I added a lot of oil to get a nice surface finish at the bottom. I don't really know why the oil makes for a nice finish but somehow it does. Just something you find out with practice. So the third and last of these plugs has a little finesse in it and that's that the cable goes into this hole, then through the table and out on the other side through this hole. So the cable is really nice and hidden and it doesn't hang over the edge of your table. I drilled this hole on the lathe and I used a small drill bit at the beginning and then I used bigger and bigger ones until I had the final size. And I also gave it a little chamfer. So now I had to turn this over by 90 degrees and then I created a little flat spot so on the drill press I could drill a hole through into the core of this part and then I had a channel that goes all the way through so I could uh, route the cable through there and it's nice and hidden. Always finish up with a chamfer, you know. No hole should not get a chamfer ever. They're great. I really like chamfering. It just gives it this really nice finished look. And that's all the hinges done. Now I just needed to make this little knob. And I wanted to make this out of steel initially, but I didn't have the right material on hand. And cutting down this much material of steel on the lathe just takes a long time. The CNC makes really quick work of this, and in the meantime, I could use the time to clean up my workshop. There's lots of aluminium shavings all over the place. And since I made this knob from scratch, I could actually give it a fine thread, which gives me more adjustability later on for the angle of the lamp. And I finished this off on a lathe to give it a really nice surface finish. You see this radial cutter here really polishes up the surface. And this is how it looks like with a white spray can finish. So for the base we have this little sleeve that goes into the table and inside that sleeve we've got this threaded bar and I'm doing this in two parts because it's just easier to machine. The threaded bar I can just bind, drill a hole through it and then everything gets held together by a nut. I really tried making this all in one part on the lathe but the steel that I bought apparently was already hardened so I couldn't use it and I broke two inserts on that so it was quite misfortunate. But this way worked out really well and aluminium is just nice to machine, you know, you can basically cut this down with a file. And I finalized this part on the lathe to get a nice finish. Just took really shallow cuts, again with the round cutter that I have. Just check out this nice finish. It's like a mirror, almost. So the sleeve is done and now I can machine the threaded rod. The nice thing about this material is super easy to machine because it's mild steel. I need to get a washer for this, but this is just a mock-up. All I have to do to the carbon fiber tube is to drill two holes for the cable to go through and surprisingly drilling holes in carbon fiber is super easy. Despite it being so super stiff and super strong, the drill just goes through it without an issue. So this is obviously going to become the lampshade and what I like to do to finish these edges is to go over them with 1000 grit sandpaper really lightly and it breaks the edges and makes them smoothly touch them. Had to be a little bit creative here, clamping this up on the CNC because it wouldn't fit in the vise. 
This is the hole for the carbon fiber rod to pass through and into the heat sink. And you could do this with a file at home, you know, if you don't have a CNC. It would be amazing what you can do with a file. You can print out the paper template, stick it to the aluminium and then start filing until you reach the edges. I thought it would be a good idea to protect the shiny surfaces on the inside to reflect the lights, but actually they're blinding a little bit, so I will spray paint them black at a later stage. So obviously this light needs an on-off switch, and you could go crazy with this and you know have it phone activated or something like that, but I just went with an offline switch and I couldn't fit it into the head of the lamp where they're normally located. So I printed this little housing. This is going to be screwed underneath my desk so I can reach it from my sitting position quite comfortably, and I 3D printed this all in one go. You know, it would be a waste to cut out all this material on the CNC. And my 3D printer doesn't have a heated bed, so I'm using this brim, which is this edge around the uh, bottom of the part, and that keeps it sticking to the base so I don't have any warping issues. All the parts are cut, time for the final assembly. So I'm applying some thermal paste to the bottom of the LED module and I'm a little bit skeptical of this stuff. I don't think it makes too much of a difference, but you know, feel free to let me know what your experience is with it. I'm a bit skeptical. I think as long as everything is clamped down to the heatsink very well, it should be good enough. And here you can see what these slots are for on the hinge. It's just a strain relief for the power cables of the LED. In a lot of my projects I actually underestimate the importance of finding a good place to route my cables. But here it worked out nicely. And a quick test run, it still works after that bashing. So I'm using this constant current power supply and it has four cables on the right side and two cables on its left side that go into the main power. And of these four cables, two are for the dimmer switch and that's just a potentiometer, 100 kilo ohms in this case. And I just solder that on. And to connect the power cables to the LED, I'm using these Wago clips and they're super convenient. They clamp all kinds of wires and they're just super quick to apply. You don't need any soldering, so really convenient and time saving to have around. And this switch connects the power supply with the main voltage. A quick test. Oh yeah. So really hope you enjoyed this project and if you did please like and subscribe and also let me know what you would have done differently. So here's the final desk lamp. So what do you say? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm super happy with this outcome, especially since my previous build video didn't go quite as planned. Next up I'm going to build an electric hydrofall surfboard, which is really exciting, so stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, you can check out some of my previous videos, or support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching guys. My name is Max Maker, and I make all kinds of stuff.